Welcome to the Mortgage Mum podcast with me, Sarah Tucker, founder of The Mortgage Mum, where we believe mortgages are about more than just money. Join us every week where we will share with you bite-sized tips, interviews with inspiring people inside and outside of our industry, and tools to help you achieve balance in every area of your life. And a huge welcome to the first ever episode of the Mortgage Mum podcast. I'm so excited to be finally doing this. It's something I've talked about for a long time. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you my story to the Mortgage Mum. And the story is quite long, so I'm going to be giving you a very brief version, which includes my stint on The Voice UK, Britain's Got Talent, The X Factor, and I'm sure you're wondering how do all these things end up with a mortgage company? Well, if you listen in, I will tell you how that happened. And um, as the series continues, I'm sure I'll share more of my story in detail. It was summer 2015. I was working as a legal PA for a big law firm in London and I had an 18-month-old daughter called Sienna who was my pride and joy. And with the birth of Sienna, I had a newfound confidence and a passion that I think was kept fairly hidden before. Um, And I got a phone call and the phone call was from Britain's Got Talent. I was due to audition for them on the Monday and I was so excited about it. I had auditioned for shows such as The X Factor or Britain's Got Talent or even Pop Idol for many years since I was 17 years old and I was 31 at the time. And I, with all this newfound confidence, felt like now was the time and now was the time where I was going to prove myself and have a moment that I can always look back on and remember. And the Britain's Got Talent producers said, hi, Sarah, Um, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to do a cut and I'm afraid you won't be auditioning in front of the judges on Monday. And I was gutted. I felt like I just had enough. At the age of 31, I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I've done this for so many years and I'm I'm just not willing to put myself through it. It doesn't feel fair. And so I decided I needed to do something else with my energy instead of dreaming about being a singer and wondering when that would happen. I thought, what can I do? Let's think about my priorities now. I had my daughter. I knew I wanted another child in the future. And I started to wonder, what could I do working from home where I can be at the school gate and pick up my children and go to their sports days and watch them in the nativity play, but also have a meaningful career? And I used to work in the mortgage industry way back when, before the credit crunch happened. And I really enjoyed it. I found it really interesting. And I loved I loved my job then. Um, but of course, the credit crunch happened. And then I decided to go to the city and do something completely different. And so I Googled, how do I become a mortgage breaker? And um, it said I needed my CMAP qualification. So I looked up courses in my local area and it seemed pretty straightforward. Um, You needed to do three exams and there was a local course that fast-tracked you through it. So I called my husband, told him about Britain's Got Talent and then said, you know, I'm thinking I might be a mortgage broker. And as always, he's very supportive and he said, go for it, just do it. So I got my CMAP six months later. Um, I studied on the train. I studied when Sienna Nap. I studied on my lunch hour. I completely committed to it and it happened. I got qualified and it felt amazing. As a woman in her 30s, to get a qualification felt so empowering. I had a lot of fear. Those exams were 
just as scary, if not more terrifying than when I was at school. And I became a mortgage breaker. Well, I became qualified. And then I Googled, okay, I'm qualified. How do I become a mortgage broker? And that wasn't quite so straightforward. It turns out the industry is not so clear about what you do once you're qualified. And also the journey from being um, CMAP qualified to a working broker is quite a long one. So I um, managed to find somebody through lovely social media who I used to work with 10 years previous and he took me under his wing and I was very lucky to work for him for a little while. And I did it around my job in London. So I worked three days a week in London and then I used to do my mortgages in the evening, on the train, in the filing room. Um, and I just used to juggle the two. And I, I took it easy. I just did friends and family to begin with. And um, I then had my son. And at that point is when I decided to take the leap to go self-employed. And um, it was quite a leap of faith. I think for anyone that's wondering whether to leap um, into the unknown, as Frozen says, um, it's never an easy thing. There's always a lot of fear that you have to break through. But ultimately, at that point, I trusted that my career was going well. And, and so I took a leap of faith and I left my job in London, my very comfortable job, and um, went fully self-employed. Now, at the same time, I had my son. So I had a baby and I had my mortgages. And I decided I needed a little bit more support. So I joined the wonderful Affinity Mortgages um, run by Jamie Lewis. And I met up with Jamie and um, asked him if we could go for a coffee. And I took Joshua in a sling and he was absolutely tiny and being fed by myself. And um, I remember sitting there thinking, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to have to feed Joshua while I have this meeting. How am I going to seem professional? And so we had a chat. And I said to him, look, I want to work from home. I want to do mortgages, but I kind of want to do it on my terms. I, I, I want to just be able to see my kids pick them up, but I will work hard. And I'm very lucky that Jamie um, was able to let me do that. And I don't think many men in the industry would have, but he did. And he always says it's because I was juggling a baby and a notepad and a smoothie all at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, we started working together in Affinity Mortgages and it was very flexible and I did very well. Um, I earned good money and I really enjoyed my life with my children at home. And um, I started to do live videos online. I started to really invest in my self-development after having Joshua, six months after having him. And I still don't know why, because we never really do. Um, I suffered from postnatal depression and I really, really was taken by surprise. I've always been someone that's quite goal orientated and always excited about something. And all of a sudden I wasn't and I didn't really know why. Um, I still worked even though I was suffering, but um, it gave me so many gifts. It made me um, really step my self-development and my self-care up. I realised I needed to take care of myself a little bit better and that driving forward isn't always about moving. Sometimes you have to be still. And I'd learned about Reiki and crystals and all these wonderful things that I will talk to you about on this podcast that have enhanced my life and changed it for the better. And um, as a result, I started to push myself out of my comfort zone more and more. And I decided perhaps I should try the singing again. Um, in this self-development course, I actually went live and said um, what life was like five years later. So we had this exercise to do and I would really recommend that you do it. Um, just record it for yourself, even if you don't put it anywhere. So you, you start your video with it's five years you know, it's 2025 and this is what's happened. And I went on to tell um, whoever was listening about this moment that I had um, on a TV show with my singing and this incredible moment that I could keep forever. And I also spoke about a company called The Mortgage Mum. Well, actually, I didn't have a name for it then. I just said a company um, and that it helped women from all across the UK. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, I didn't even really know that it was an idea of mine until 
that day. It just kind of came out and it was live. So lots of things come out when you're live. Um, And yeah, it was quite interesting to see what I envisioned for myself five years down the line, being completely ambitious. Within the year, I did send my video off to The Voice UK and I got blind audition. And for those of you who didn't see it, you can see it on YouTube. Just type in Sarah Tucker Blind Audition and you'll see the fear as I walked on the stage and you'll see the joy at me getting four turns. And there is a whole story behind that blind audition day that I'm going to share with you on a bonus episode in the future. Um, But for the purposes of today, I went for that blind audition and I... I can't explain to you how terrified I was. I was terrified and ready all at the same time. I've never felt so prepared for something. I rehearsed that song thousands of times at home. I played out that scene thousands of times at home in my head as I walked to the school. Um, My daughter even joined in by the end of it because I was doing it so often. And there's so much power in that, which I will talk about again in future episodes. There's so much I want to talk about. It's not just going to be about mortgages. Um, Anyway, so the the blind audition went brilliantly and um, I came back to my job and said to Jamie what had happened and we had a really good chat and he said, look, what does the future look like for you? And there's something that happens when you are brave. When you choose to push yourself, you find that you have a voice and you find that there's things that you think and you feel and you have an opinion on that maybe you just didn't allow yourself to talk about before. And so I told Jamie about this seed of an idea I had about women being able to be brokers and us training them and and then becoming brokers all around the UK and us managing them online. And at that time, Zoom and <laughs> the world we live in now was not the same. It was not being done in the industry, certainly. And even the live videos were very, very different. And um, Jamie said, well, look, if you win your battle, you're going to be on TV three times and therefore you're going to have a platform. And if you win, I think we should do it and we'll set it up as a company. And I thought, oh my gosh, no pressure. (laughs) So again, if you want to look on YouTube, you can see the battle. And I am very proud to say I did win the battle against the amazing Craig Forsyth, who blows me away with his um, vocals. He's incredible and one of my very dear friends. And um, sadly, there were no steals, so we both couldn't go through. We were the last battle of the whole entire series. And um, yeah, I I did get, I did win it and go through. Um, I was on Team J-HUD and it was the most incredible experience of my life. Um, And even more exciting was that I got to call Jamie and tell him we were doing it. We were going to set up the mortgage mum and we had to do it fast because of my contract with The Voice meant I had two weeks to get it out. So (laughs) the photo shoot that you see of the perfect mum with her kids in a beautiful kitchen, that is my house. But it wasn't like that on the other side of the camera. It was Christmas. There was a whole heap of mess on the other side. So don't always believe the images you see on Instagram. And um, we set the mortgage mum up and we officially um, launched it in September. So this was in the January um, of 2019. And we launched it in September 2019. And I'm very proud to say that a year later, we have 20 mortgage mums and they really are dotted all across the UK. They are incredible women who are not all mothers, all women are welcome here, but they are, they're very, very special women. And each of them offer their own unique set of skills. And um, I've watched them go from unqualified to qualified and thriving as brokers, as mothers in a time of crisis. You know, we have had a pandemic. This is not a normal year and yet they have achieved so much for themselves and their lives and they are very inspiring. And that is the very, very brief story to The Mortgage Mum. And The Mortgage Mum podcast is really an extension of what we're trying to do in The Mortgage Mum, which is breathing life into this industry in a new way, in a way that's fresh, that's feminine and that's very open. I think mortgages are about more than just money. I think money is is so emotional. Um, it's linked 
to so much of how we feel about ourselves is how we have a relationship with money. And money is linked to mindset and mindset is linked to everything. And so mortgages are not just a rate. Mortgages are not just money you have to pay to live in your house. They are so much more than that. And I hope that this podcast and my story and the stories of others will inspire you in your life and your career and ultimately with your mortgage. So thank you for listening. I'm going to touch on bits of this story in much more detail in the future. And I hope you'll join me for future episodes. Thank you so much for listening to the Mortgage Mum podcast. And I hope you learned something new today and felt inspired in some way. Here at The Mortgage Mum, we really believe in people supporting people. So if you've enjoyed this episode of The Mortgage Mum podcast, please share and subscribe and rate and review this podcast. And let's keep supporting each other. And of course, if you would like help with your mortgage or your insurance, head over to www.themortgagemum.co.uk or contact any one of the team on social media. We would love to help you. Thank you for listening.